By this point in the course, we've talked about quite a lot of advanced topics as well, including traits. Now, uh, we have talked about generics a little bit before, but uh, I thought to include a separate section of this course dedicated to generics because they've popped up here and there before and we've jumped over them, didn't really explain them fully. We even looked at um, uh, basically generics even in the pointers and the traits section of this course, but again, we didn't fully explain them. But let's go ahead and dedicate this part of the video to generics in Rust. Now, generics are about reusing code, as we'll see. We'll have a look at quite a few examples in this in this part of the video that's dedicated to generics that uh, I'll try to really explain why generics are so good in reusing code. So let's go ahead first and create a point struct, okay? And this point is going to have 32-bit uh, integers as x and y points. So let's say a struct point, okay? And then we're going to say x is i32, and let's do the same thing for the y point. I have to type it quite fast. Otherwise, GitHub Copilot is going to interfere and start implementing its own code. So now that we have this code, uh, this point, you can see we haven't used it yet, but that's fine. We're going to put that to test. As you can see, at this point, uh, this structure can only accept integers of 32 bits. So um, we can we can actually uh, go ahead and test this, and you'll see that you can't pass floating point values to this structure. So a valid instance of this point would be, for instance, a let p1, and we would say it's a point. And you can see as long as you pass integers to it, then it's going to work properly. But if you go ahead and add integers or set integers on this point that are a floating point data, then you will get some problems, as we'll see. So if we say 0.2, let's go ahead in here and say 0.0, .0 and 0 0.04, it's Y coordinate. And now you'll get an error from the compiler. And so you'll see that it says mismatch types expected an integer of 32 bits and it found a floating point number. Okay, so now we have a problem. We have a point struct that doesn't work with integers. Sorry, it doesn't work with floating point values. Now, you may be saying that, okay, well, I can go ahead and, for instance, create a point struct that only works with floating point values. And yeah, that would that would also be okay. So if you say F32 in here, F32, and all of a sudden you see, oh, now I have a problem with integers. So integers aren't accepted. So this is the point where you have to think about creating a generic point. So a point could be a point in any coordinate that, for instance, takes an X and Y could be integer or floats numbers. So you could make this uh, struct a generic. So you say any value of type T, any type, and then you put T in here. So all of a sudden, instantiations of these points work as expected. This one becomes a point of I32. The other one becomes a point of F64. Now, your code compiles, uh, but we have an unconstrained point, meaning that we can actually create uh, points of string, for instance. So if we go ahead in here and say, let P3 is a point, uh, and this X, we can say foo, and Y, we can say bar. Now, all of a sudden, you'll see that this becomes a point of string slices. And this makes no sense in, um, I mean, usually in any coordinate, you wouldn't want to have like a string representing your x and y positions. So now we have an unconstrained point. So we created a point, which is a generic structure. However, we have left it unconstrained. And we're going to look at how we can actually fix that. So to see the problem in detail, you'd be like, okay, but what is the actual problem with this? So let's have a look at what this problem actually entails for our code. So let's go ahead and, and do an implementation uh, of a um, point that gives us a method on that point, which allows us then to uh, move um, a point by a given x and y value, okay? So let's go ahead in here and say it's uh, uh, implementation of point. So implementation of t of point t, okay, in here. And then we're going to have an f, fn move offset, all right? And um, we can see then we're getting a problem uh, in our implementation. So you will have now compile time errors because you can see by moving a mutable instances of self with an X and Y, we're getting an error saying binary assignment operation plus equal cannot be applied to type T. So what happened here is that the compiler doesn't know at compile time what type of values these are going to be. So if it's a string slice, 
then the plus equal operator is not going to work on that string slice. And for many other types, it's not going to work. So the compiler doesn't understand what these types are. And that's because we've left points as an unconstrained generic structure in Rust, and that's not going to work so well. So let's go ahead and try to fix this. This particular operator, it's called add assign in Rust. It may be called something else, for instance, in Python or Swift, but in Rust at least it's called an add assign. And you can import that into your code so that you can start implementing it for your own structs or enums. So let's say use std ops and then add assign. This is in operators, okay? So now we have add assign, and we want to go ahead and implement this for our person. So let's go ahead and say in here that we are working with move offset. And uh, what we want is for move offset to only be available on um, points that include values of type T as long as that T uh, adheres to the add assign uh, trait. You can see it's a trait. So at the moment, this move offset function works for any um, point as long as we have the generic T in here. But we can say in here, move offset. And then we say where T is add assign. OK? So now you see all of a sudden the compilation works so without a problem. So let's go ahead and create a mutable reference to points now. So let's say uh, let's. Uh, Let's uh, MUTP is a point, okay? And let's say point of one and two, as you can see at the bottom of the screen, one and two, all right? Then we're gonna create, a, we're gonna move that point by a specific a value. So let's say P, move offset, all right? And then we're gonna say move it by three and four, okay? So uh, let's go ahead and then debug this point. Let's also add a, deb a derive debug to it. So we say derive debug, as we've seen before. And then we're just going to print that as a debug a point to the console. So let's have a look at the values being printed to the console. You can see the value of x is 4 now, because 1 was moved uh, by three points to the value of four, and two was moved by the value of four to become six at the end. So this is how you would create a, a generic function uh, on top of, for instance, a generic structure and, and ensure that your data type of T conforms to a specific trait. Now, you can also implement add assign on point itself so that you can uh, basically uh, apply the plus equal um, you can apply the plus equal assignment to an instance of point so let's have a look at an example let's go in here and create an implementation for it so let's say impl and let's say t add assign okay and, and we say add assign is going to be implemented uh, for point of t so what this really means is that what we're saying is that we're implementing add assign on point as long as the data type that point itself is carrying conforms to the add assign trait Okay, so let's go ahead and implement add assign, as you can see in here, mutable self, and the other one is not a mutable self, an immutable copy of self, uh, and then not an immutable copy of self, so it's an actually mutable instance of point. And we're taking self's x and adding the other x to self x, and this, uh, this one as well is self-explanatory. So this does an implementation of add assign for a point as long as the data type, the generic type of t, conforms to add assign itself as specified by this generic parameter in here, okay? Now, you can, uh, so yeah, I, I should have br brought up this title before, but we've already implemented add assign for point. So what we can do is to create a mutable point. We already have this with the x and y values set to one and two um, respectively. And let's go ahead and create an immutable uh, variable for a point as well. So let's call this one p1 and let's call this one p2. And p1 is not, sorry, p2 shouldn't be mutable. So let's call this one and give it the values of three and four, okay? Now, what you can do, uh, you can go ahead and move p1 by the value of p2. So you can say p1 plus equal to p2. So you can see now this is working fine simply because we've implemented add assign on the entire point uh, structure itself. So you can then print ln p1 to see that its point has been moved. Let's see if you can find that to 4 and 6 as expected.
Okay, um, you can also add upon this with partial EQ. Partial EQ is something that allows you to implement equality on your uh, on your structures, even if they're generic. So uh, let's go ahead and implement partial EQ on point. Because if you look here, now that we've implemented P1 and P2, if you write a statement like if P1 is equal to P2, you can see you will get an error in here saying that partial uh, basically this operator cannot be applied to types of point with floating point data. Uh, but it doesn't really necessarily have anything to do with the, with the fact that they include floating point data. It could be an integer as well. But still, this doesn't work because we haven't implemented partial EQ trait on point. So let's go ahead and implement partial EQ. So we're going to go ahead uh, to here just like this and say an implementation uh, as long as t conforms to partial eq itself uh, and then implement partial eq uh, eq for point of t okay and you can see in here uh, that the partial eq uh, trait expects you to implement this particular function gets a reference to self and gets a, a reference uh, to another instance of uh, self and um, the reason these two are written in different ways is that this is a reference to the current instance of self whereas this one is a reference to another instance of the self's type okay and then here you can see that we can use the equality comparison or the equality operator between the x of self and x of other simply because we've constrained the type of x and y to partial eq so they support this as well okay so as long as x and y of this and that are equal to each other, then that means the instances of points are uh, considered to be equal to each other as well. So now we've done the implementation of EQ. I should have brought up this label a little bit earlier. So let's go ahead and put it to test. Now we say if P1 and P2 are equal, then we say println P1 and P2 are equal, else we say they're not equal. All right, let's bring up the terminal in here and look at the results. We can see then P1 and P2 are not equal printed to the screen. And if in here I say 1 and 2 for both of them, then we can see uh, P1 and P2 are equal being, being printed to the screen. Okay. Now, traits and generics go very much hand in hand, and we've seen examples of this already, but let's see more examples. So let's go ahead and create, a, actually delete all of this from here, and we can also remove the implementations for our points and all of this pretty much from here, okay? Um, so let's go ahead and um, create a run trait. So uh, a trait, we say uh, can run. Trait can run, okay? And then we will have a function called run on that trait, and we will also create a trait called can uh, walk. Okay, so trait, uh, trait can walk with a simple function on it as well, fn walk with a reference to self. All right, just like that. So now we have two traits. So let's go ahead and implement can run for a vector uh, as long as that vector also implements, uh, as long as that vector includes elements that themselves conform to the can run trait, okay? So we say as long as a vector includes uh, and all its elements can run, then the entire vector can run. Okay, so let's go ahead and say IMPL uh, T can run, uh, and then we say can run for, can run for a vector of type T. Okay, then we will uh, actually implement the run function ourselves. So let's get Visual Studio Code to give us an error in here, and I'm going to say implement missing members. So now we get a run function on our vector, and we say for item in self, and then we say item run. And this is a great uh, suggestion by GitHub Copilot. So what happened in here is that we said as long as a vector's items can run, then the entire vector can actually run. Okay. Let's go ahead and implement can walk as well for a vector in the exact same way. So let's go ahead and copy that and bring it here and then change all these can runs to can walk. And we say can walk. Okay. And here as well, the method walk has to be implemented. And then here we say item walk. All right. So now we have an implementation of can walk and can run on vectors of can walk and can run respectively. Now let's go ahead and define a person structure in here. Let's say a struct person. Okay. And then this person only has a name, as you can see in here. Good. And uh, we're going to go ahead and implement can walk and can run for a person. So let's say IMPL can walk 
poor person and this person is um, going to have a uh, walk and similarly we're going to have can run as well for a person so implement can run uh, traits on person can run and then the function run and then we're going to say person is running okay so great now we have can walk and can run and uh, uh, how do you say it traits and we've implemented them on vectors uh, and we've also have a person struct that conforms to can walk and can run uh, traits now define now let's define a structure that is called elephant okay that cannot run but it will be able to walk so let's say a struct uh, elephant and it will have a name as well and we're going to implement only can walk on that elephant so impl can walk on a four elephant and then let's just say uh, this elephant is walking all right so that's really great so let's just implement can walk for elephant basically i should have brought up this label a little bit before now what we're going to do is to go ahead and define a vector of persons so i really hate this like data manipulation let's see oh oh my god uh, github copilot just created an entire vector of persons for me oh jesus wow okay github copilot right wrote the entire code basically so uh this was amazing i think i probably have written this code before and that's why the copilot just could create it for me so let's let's see what happened in here so we said let people and it created a vector for us with persons in it so this is nothing i mean nothing scientific it's just three instances of person okay now you can see on people which is this vector, we can say run and walk because we've already implemented these functions on um, a vector. You can see we've implemented can walk and implemented can run on those uh, on, on that vector. However, in here, when we create elephants is a vector of different elephant instances. Um, you can see here we have run and walk and this code hasn't compiled yet. So I think if I save this function, we're gonna get an, a compile time error on this run function in here. And you can see the method run exists for struct vec elephant, but it's trade bounds were not satisfied items from trades can only be used, blah, blah, blah. So what it's really saying in here, so actually, uh, let me go ahead through these uh, titles, make the person objects walk. So we've already done that. Uh, so walk, let's bring it up here. Okay. And uh, let's also ensure that we've done the code for people run. So that's really good as well. Now you have to define your array of elephants and we've already done that. So here is a vector, vector of elephants. And then we can make the elephants walk. So let's bring up this code in here. And then also let's have a look at this label that says you cannot make the elephants run okay because elephants do not conform to the can run um trait you can fix that though you can say uh, impl can run for elephant and just implement the run function and all of a sudden this error will go away but this was intentional i, I just want to show you that elephants usually cannot be considered as running even though they can walk quite fast so now we saw examples of implementing uh, specific traits on generic types like partial EQ, and we've implemented um, also our own traits on uh, generic types, okay? So generics are an important part of learning Rust, and you just need to accept that they exist and that you cannot get away uh, becoming a good Rust developer without knowing generics so i hope this chapter and this part of the video gave you some ideas of what generics are and why they're so useful and i uh, hope to see you in the next part of the course